Hi, in this short video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to connect the Gmail developer app in Pipedream to your Gmail personal account or Gmail workspace. The benefits of using this specific app over the regular Gmail app in Pipedream include the ability to actually trigger a workflow when a new email is received into a Gmail inbox, whereas the normal Gmail app is restricted to sending only sending outbound email. In general, the Gmail developer app in Pipedream is more flexible and allows you to choose your own permissions on the app, whereas the Gmail app in Pipedream is restricted by Google. So let's get started. I have a new workflow. I'm going to search for Gmail as the trigger, and here is the Gmail developer app. I'm going to select this option, and we can see there's two pre-built triggers at the time of the recording, and I'm going to select the new email received, which will trigger this workflow to start when a new email is received into our connected Google or Gmail account. The first prompt is to actually connect our account. We can click this and we can see that it's not your typical OAuth authentication flow. It's asking us for three values, the client ID, the client secret, and the space separated scopes. How we find these values is by creating a Google project that has the Gmail API enabled, and then we can create these three credentials. So we're going to head on over to the Google Cloud Console which allows us to create and manage app, our applications or projects under the Google Cloud. And we're going to select, you can select your existing project or you can create a brand new project. In my case, I'm going to create a brand new project and call it a pipe dream example. If you're using a workspace account, an organization location will be cho cho chosen for you. But if you're using a personal account, this won't, this, the organization and location won't apply. It may take a few moments for the Google Cloud to create your project, but once it's been created, you can select it. Now you're under the specific project dashboard, and we need now to enable the Gmail API for this particular project. So we can open up this left-hand menu and select APIs and services. Under there, we can see the enabled APIs and services. These are all of the APIs that are enabled on our account, which we don't have any yet, so we'll click the Enable APIs and Services, which will allow us to search for the Gmail integration for this project. So I'm gonna search for Gmail, and here the top result we could see, it's called the Gmail API. This is what we want to enable on our brand new project. We just click the big blue Enable button, and this will allow our Gmail workspace to be programmatically accessed by another app, in this case, Pipedream. Now that we've enabled the API, we need to actually design the OAuth consent screen. This is going to be a external type. So this will be available to your, by selecting external, we make it available to Pipedream. I'm going to click create. And here we can just call it once again, the Pipedream example. And the support email can just be your own email. The app logo is not important. But what is important is adding your email address in case you have an issue with your own integration here. Everything else can be, the app domain fields can be ignored. We'll click save and continue. And now we can define the scopes. Scopes, if, you, if you're not a developer, scopes are basically the word permission. It's a synonym for permission. We wanna add the permissions for, e for reading our email. So I'm gonna search for the Gmail properties here. If you're not sure which scopes you'd like to restrict to, I recommend using the HTTPS mail.google.com scope because this is the overall scope. This will give access to read, compose, and all the basic API functions to Pipedream. If you wanna restrict Pipedream to only send email or only read email, email, you can do so by selecting the specific scopes below. After you up selected the scope, scroll down and click update. Then you can see that the scope is added to the bottom of the page. Click save and continue. And now we add test users. We're not actually going to publish this app for the public to use. It's only for our workspace and Pipedream. So we can restrict the users to just our own users that are going to use this integration, i.e. yourself and your teammates. So I'm gonna restrict it to my own Pipedream email address. Since I'm the only one going to be using this integration, and click add again to close the menu. We'll click save and continue after we've added all the email addresses that should be authenticated with this integration. 
Then finally, we'll see the review and just summarize to make sure that we have set the user type to external and we have added the correct scopes we need for our workflow to work properly and have the permissions it needs to access Google. Finally, we'll double check to make sure our test users are all listed here that should have access to this particular integration. Great. So now we've created the OAuth permissions and set the scopes, we can go back to the credentials area to generate those three values we need to insert into Pipedream. Under the credentials, you'll see a couple options. We care about creating an OAuth2 client ID. So we'll, set a, we'll use the create credentials at the very top here and select the OAuth client ID option. The application type is a web application and we can just name it Pipedream. The authorized redirect URL is actually available in the prompt on Pipedream. As so we can see here in the directions, HTTPS API.pipedream.com, this long URL, we will paste it into this authorized redirect URL and then click create. Here is where you'll find the client ID and client secret. So we'll copy these values. So there's the client ID and the client secret. And the space separated scopes are the scopes that you define in the OAuth consent screen I just showed you. If you follow this video to a T, then this scope is already available here. If you, if you decided to use very specific scopes, don't forget to separate them with a space instead of just having them separated by commas. Finally, we'll click continue and you should see an OAuth screen pop up. We'll select our test user account that we've allowed to access this external app that we created you'll be prompted with the scopes that you defined in the OAuth screen. So here I have all of the scopes enabled with that mail.google.com scope. So I can read, compose, send, and delete email from Gmail using my Pipedream workflow if I choose to. We just click allow to accept the permissions. And then we'll see authentication success successful on the Pipedream side and our app is now connected to our Gmail account. It's a bit of a lengthy process, but it's really worth it because you get the full scopes available in Gmail, and now you can programmatically access your Gmail account and create rich embedded workflows using any of the thousand apps available in the Pipedream embedded platform. Hope this was helpful. Have a great day.